I'm always compelled when there's a new horror movie that's got a lot of good hype around it because I'm always curious to see if it actually stands up to what people are saying. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Long Legs. This is a film that's directed by Osgood Perkins. It's following Makia Monroe, who's playing this young, kind of out of her depth, but also somewhat intuitive FBI agent. After having a pretty quick success with one case, she's brought on to Long Legs, who is this somewhat kind of Manson serial killer played by Nicolas Cage, who is convincing these families to basically be butchered by the father. Now, the first thing I want to say about Nicolas Cage, he's wackadoo, as always. Uh, the face that he has in this movie, they gave him some prosthetics, and the best way I can describe it is he looks like Pete Burns from Dead or Alive. Yeah, this is what he looks like. And there were some people that were saying this, and I kind of agree, is I understand why they don't shoot his face that often, is because this doesn't really look real. It looks more like it's a mask on his face, and I don't know if that was the intention or not. Not, but I do understand why you see his mouth more than anything else in terms of his face. Cage is kind of scary in this, but also kind of funny inducing. I understand that some people were saying that this is taking those memes and then making them horror filled. There's kind of a given pull with that. Something that Osgood Perkins has definitely shown both in his interviews as well as his previous filmmaking is that he's really big on the old 70s satanic horror cult movies, demonic possession, all that kind of stuff. Not only with his stories, but also with how he shoots the movies. These are very slow burn films and those films were slow burns as well, but they also had these flashes of strange imagery, loud noises, loud piercing music, trying to make you feel uncomfortable throughout the whole movie. He attempts that with the sound design, which very good sound design, huge thumbs up to that. Cinematography, which is pretty good. I did like the lighting for a lot of the movie. There were a lot of wides that were used in this too, and it kind of got a bit excessive at some points. Wides can be used to make the character look small, to make it look that like they are being very overburdened by what's happening. And that can work to some extent, but I felt that the excessive amount of usage of it kind of diminished what was attempted to be done and it kind of took away from what that feeling is. If it was used less, I feel like it would have been more powerful with that. Makia is okay in it, but I feel like the number one note that was given to her by Osgood was breathe a lot, just keep on. <laughs> Obviously trying to build tension and build an uneasy atmosphere in the movie with actions like that, but it doesn't really work. I feel Osgood knows a lot of good movies of this genre and he is obviously inspired by them but i don't think he realizes why a lot of them failed also what made the good ones good this film was filmed out here it was filmed out in maple ridge surrey vancouver it was pretty cool there was a lot of places that i could point out and i was like oh that's great the other cool factor was i was watching this movie with mark mark is a liaison for film, and he got to have some uh, conversations with Osgood. From those conversations, he said that he said that Osgood just seemed to have a good idea of what horror was like, and he he seemed like he knew his stuff. But then when we left this movie, Mark made the point that I don't think he knows as much as he thinks he does. Long legs is long. It feels very slow burn and sometimes those can work i like slow burn movies especially when the tension is there when you are building towards something however this movie goes so slow that a lot of the scenes that are trying to really induce some uncomfortable feeling into you kind of fail at least for me because I'm just not scared. I know there were some people who were talking about how this movie is a one of the scariest movies of the year. I feel like these are people who don't watch horror. It's kind of like those groups that are like, oh, they're scared by the smallest of things. And there was a lot of points in the movie where I felt like this the whole time. I was waiting for something to really jump out. And I'm not talking about the jump scares looking at the snakes or the loud noises or the uncomfortable audio. I was actually expecting something to scare me. And now I'm coming back to Osgood himself here because I feel like this guy has a bit of pretentiousness to him that's not exactly deserved. For one, if you look at his IMDb, for those movies appear to be shitters. I'm not 
saying that's my opinion of them, that's just what the ratings are on IMDb. Well, from a lot of what people say now, the ratings on IMDb are more trustworthy than anything. And the other thing is, there's an interview here with him, and it's about him not wanting to watch current day horror movies. Uh, I'm gonna read it here. On the other hand, I want to identify or atone with my father by going down the same path of representing the good name in the genre in question. Just for reference, his dad was Norman Bates in the original Psycho. But then I also have a sort of distaste for it. I wouldn't say I'm someone who likes or dislikes horror movies. I don't see new ones. I have no interest. I'll never see Maxine. I'll never see Pearl. I saw X for reasons. It wasn't on purpose. I don't see contemporary things. They don't interest me at all. And, and I'm not saying that they aren't great. I'm sure they're great and make a lot of people happy, which is all that really matters. But I like the horror genre because it's the genre that permits the most invention and encourages the most poetry. It's all guessing and grasping at what is essentially unknowable. One, that reads off as just like a pretentious prick. It's ridiculous that you say you won't watch anything new when the genre can constantly be new and has the most invention, when there's something that's new to invent with horror, wouldn't you want to watch it? I don't know. I Like I said, I, I just found he was quite pretentious with this. But then, like I said, as the movie goes on, the film is going so slow and the the means in which the story is being told just felt so pretentious to me that when a certain element of the story was introduced, I was immediately able to guess that's the cause of all of this. And I was kind of fucking flabbergasted when I was right because the idea was so loony that I was like no there's no way and it was I was right and I couldn't believe it so when the twist of the movie appeared not only was it just a giant exposition dump that I had already figured out it also just kind of dumbed it down for the audience to make it feel like Osgood's like you guys have been able to understand my story up until this point so I'm just gonna give you all the answers here and then the movie just kind of ended. Came to this conclusion of just absurdity. Everyone just kind of got dumb. The motion of characters just felt like everyone was in molasses. It just wasn't scary. It wasn't entertaining to me. It didn't have this pull and this factor that everyone's talking about. And, and again, this is just my opinion. But when you have something that has so much hype around it, and then you watch it, and it's just like, okay, do you guys watch, like, the Teletubbies for scares? I'm not saying the Teletubbies didn't have some frightening imagery sometimes unintentionally. I just feel like a lot of people who hype up horror movies now have never actually watched horror movies. I could see where he was coming from with a couple of his references with a lot of the imagery. Vanity Fair actually did a review, and they had a great title, is that it is a reference to movies that are far better than this one. It's something along like that lines, and that's exactly what Long Legs is. It's an attempt to try and be like movies that were of this time, but he thinks he's done them better, or at least that's this, the impression I'm getting. Long Legs doesn't have the tension, it doesn't have the horror, it has some okay performances, it has great sound design, it has some pretty decent cinematography if the complete overuse of wide le lenses. And it's predictable, at least for me. I, I saw the fucking ending coming from a mile away. For those of you who are loving this movie, that's awesome for you. I'm happy that you enjoy this. If you're going to the movie theaters to watch this, perfect. That's exactly what I suggest you do. But for me personally, I think Long Legs is incredibly overhyped. In the end, I'm going to give Long Legs a 2 out of 7. It had far more pretentious ideologies to it than it actually did have cinematic qualities. There are other movies that I have seen in the last few years that have had very small distributions that are far fucking better than this movie. Anyways, those are my thoughts about this movie. Very long-winded, apologies, but I hope you guys kind of got where I was coming from. Very curious to see what you guys have to say about this movie. Please let me know in the comments below. Did you like it? Did you not like it? What do you think are parts about it that are good? For anyone who comes in here and says, oh, you just didn't get it, it's like, I did get it, guys. I literally pointed out the fucking twist. So it's not so much of not getting it, it's just, it's not as good as it thinks it is. That's what is happening here. But again, those are my opinions, of course. Let's have a discussion. Please let me know in the comments below what you guys thought about the movie. If you like this review, leave a like. And if you're interested in more, subscribe. And until then, I'll see you guys next time.